Hello, cruel world. What are the psychological processes behind Pseudologica Fantastica, aka compulsive lying? What are some of history's most well-known cases of compulsive liars? Do these people actually believe their own falsehoods and why do they lie? I will answer all these questions and many more in this episode. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess mentally disordered offenders for a living so that you don't have to. Feel free to call me the ominous Shahamanus. My aim is to educate you and get you thinking like a forensic psychiatrist, also to take over the world at some point. So grab your favorite polygraph and welcome to A Psych for Sore Minds. Right, let me tell you about a real life case. Judge Patrick Cowenberg was removed from office in 2001 by the State of California Commission due to telling one too many porcupines. He lied his way to become a judge and he continued lying once he was a judge. And he deliberately provided false information to the commission during its investigation. He told mistruths at different times on numerous occasions to judges, barristers, newspapers, reporters, as well as the commission. He said under oath that he participated in covert CIA operations in Africa and that he had a master's degree in psychology when none of those things were true. He stated that he received a purple heart for injuries sustained in Vietnam, including shrapnel that was still lodged in his groin. Whereas in reality, he was never in Vietnam and he had genital warts. Okay, I might have made up the warts bit, but the rest is true. A psychiatrist expert witness, such as myself, examined Judge Cowenbird and concluded that he was suffering from Pseudologica Fantastica. And I know this kind of sounds like a Harry Potter spell to make Dr. Grande's videos seem more interesting, but it's actually a habit of storytelling which kind of mixes in fantasy interwoven with some actual facts and it is known as pathological lying. The psychiatrist said that this was treatable with therapy and even said that Judge Cowenberg was fit for judicial services. Other examples of pathological lying include Joseph Ellis, who's a Pulitzer Prize winning history professor. And he said that he parachuted into Vietnam with the 101st Airborne, although he simultaneously said he protested the war at home. Whereas in actual fact, during the war, he was teaching history at West Point, which is like a military academy in New York. So once this dude's life was exposed, he was suspended without pay for a year. What is it with all these crazy people claiming to have been in the army in Vietnam? I didn't see any of them when I was fighting over there. Another example would be Jeffrey Archer. I'm guessing some of the UK viewers would know who he is. He's a member of the House of Lords uh, and in English Parliament, he was convicted of three charges of perverting the course of justice and one of perjury in 1987. So this was all surrounding a libel case that centered around allegations that he had had sex with a prostitute. So Archer, who pleaded not guilty to all these charges, was accused of lying and he apparently created false diaries because he wanted to win 50, uh, 500,000 pounds in libel damages from the Daily Star, which is a newspaper. This is all back in 1987. And this is when he took the tabloid to court. By the way, did I tell you that haircut really suits you? <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't true. I just can't help fabricating. The presence of lying has been noted by eminent psychiatrists for centuries. So there was, for example, a German doctor called Dr. Delbruck, and he first described the concept of pathological lying after examining a number of his patients, and he thought they deserved their own special category. So he called it Pseudologica Fantastica, and it's known in psychiatric circles always as mythomania, it's known more colloquially as morbid lying, and it's known in my local nursery as ants in your pants. You Bombay! <laughs> Pseudologica Fantastica originally was defined as follows. Falsification entirely disproportionate to any discernible end in view, may be extensive and very complicated, manifesting over a period of years or even a lifetime in the absence of a definitive insanity, feeble-mindedness, or epilepsy. Some people don't think that it's a separate mental disease, but it's just something that's related to psychopathy. 
By the way, see my series on psychopaths on this channel if you're interested. I've gone through a real life case of working with a psychopath as well as treating a psychopath who ended up running away from our locked secure psychiatric unit. I've done another video on the difference between psychopaths and narcissists. Always be plugging. I think the most important component of Pseudologica Fantastica is that there doesn't seem to be any material reward or social advantage. So they're not, there's no reason for actually lying. The, the incentive seems to be telling the lie itself. So in other words, there's no kind of understandable explanation, at least to anybody that's not the lying party. Some psychiatrists would even count these as delusions. <clears throat> the definition of delusion, delusion is a, sh a false, unshakable belief that doesn't come from an understandable source. In my type of uh, patient client group, they tend to be paranoid delusions, such as people feeling that other people, strangers want to hurt them or are following them. I've done a whole video on delusions and how it's related to mental illness. Go chiggity, 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 check it out. Always be plugging. Okay, next question. Do pathological liars believe their own untruths? And the answer is to a certain extent, but they generally, and they generally have sound judgment in other matters, but they believe themselves to a degree. In other words, they can detect other people's bullshit, but they believe, or at least are emotionally invested in their own bullshit. I know you like to think yo shit don't stink, but sorry. You Bombay. <laughs> If you're interested in this whole topic, lying, etc., etc., I've done videos about police detection, how they spot liars, the type of interview techniques they use, uh, also about polygraph tests, including how you can actually beat one and how they work. <clears throat> Go check them all out. You're welcome. With pathological lying, it's questionable whether it's even a conscious act. And it's often unplanned and is actually quite impulsive. So people don't plan out in advance that they're gonna say this lie to this person at this time. So it's basically like a fantasy, but when the fantasy takes hold of reality. So we all have our fantasies. I want to be a YouTube star. You want your work colleagues to actually invite you out to the Christmas do next year. But we rarely lie about or actually believe in our fantasies. By the way, did I tell you you've got beautiful eyes? Ah, sorry, just can't help myself, can't stop lying. So next, I wanted to enlighten you viewers with a great quote about lying. I just, what was it? I can't remember. Um, oh yeah, that was it. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. And that is by my boy, Mark Twain. Another quote about lying. The reason I talk to myself is because I'm the only one whose answers I will accept. And that is by George Carlin, the legendary stand-up comedian, R.I.P. Also happens to be Rufus from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Another quote, last one. History is a set of lies agreed upon. Pretty clever. That is by my man, Napoleon Bonaparte, who also featured in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Also unfortunately dead, rest in peace. Bogus. Okay. Time to expand your already well-educated, gifted, genius brains. <laughs> Sorry, just cannot stop with the deceptions today. Let me tell you about some psychiatric disorders which are associated with lying, but are not pathological lying, and how they are differentiated. So, pay attention, nerds. Here comes the science. There is, of course, malingering. So that's the intentional production of physical or psychiatric symptoms for an external reason, such as getting medication or you know, avoiding work, getting a sick note. So I give evidence in criminal courts as a psychiatric expert witness, and I fairly frequently see defendants who either fake or exaggerate mental illness. <clears throat> and this is to get leniency or even try to get the insanity plea for criminal charges. By the way, I've done a whole series on malingering and faking mental illness. Go and chiggity chiggity, check it out. Always be plugging. These videos also include the tactics that I use to catch out somebody who is lying. <clears throat> so in those particular cases, there is an obvious external purpose, unlike pathological lying. Before I continue telling you about the other psychiatric di disorders associated with lying, firstly, let me introduce you to this channel. You're watching Psych for Sore Minds. My name is Dr. Shaham Das. You can call me the ominous Shahamanus. I'm a consultant forensic psychiatrist. I assess defendants in prisons and in courts and in psychiatric units. I give expert witness evidence in criminal trials. I'm your favorite Asian Indian 
forensic psychiatrist based in London with a gold tooth, or at least in your top three. I implore you to watch my other videos. I've got a whole range of issues from high profile cases. I did a video recently on Catherine Knight, who beheaded her own husband, John Wayne Bobbitt, whose wife castrated him. I'm sure you've heard of that case. I talk about individual diagnoses. I talk about criminality in general. There's something for everybody on my channel. I implore you to subscribe. Not only does it help me out immeasurably, but it prevents future pubic hair from being trapped in your bath plug, guaranteed or your money back. Right, let's get back to the uh, episode. Another psychiatric illness is a factitious disorder. So that means when you produce symptoms through false means, either faking the symptoms themselves or causing illness by taking you know, poison or fabricating test results, though this is different from malingering because the purpose is to assume the sick role and it's for sympathy. So it's not to get off work, it's actually to take on the role of a, of a patient. So of course, I'm talking about Schmunchausen's and Schmunchausen's by proxy. If you're a true crime fan, you've probably heard the case of D.D. Blanchard, who's the victims of Munchausen's by proxy, who ended up killing the perpetrator, her own mother. And yes, I've done a video about her somewhere on this channel. Uh, I go into the psychological processes. I give my own psychoanalysis. It's a shocking case. If you haven't heard of it, then you should definitely check that video out. And if you have, check it out anyway. Always be plugging. Okay, and then there's confabulation. This is when there's periods of amnesia and the patient tries to cover this up cover up these gaps with material that they make up. So <clears throat> this contrasts pathological lying, because with pathological lying, there is no amnesia. So confabulation includes a couple of well-known syndromes, including Korsakoff syndromes. So Korsakoff syndrome is caused when heavy alcohol abuse for years and years causes a type of alcohol-induced dementia. Just like when your uncle told you at Christmas dinner that he'd met Elvis Presley. By the way, and I'll keep saying this, but go and see my series on alcohol. I talk about the relationship between alcohol and offending and the relationship between alcohol and mental illness and like how it's all connected together. Always be plugging. Uh, also, the lying is associated with specific personality disorders. I won't go into detail of what a personality disorder is, but very briefly, it's like a, an entrenched character flaw as opposed to a mental illness, which is a change in your normal functioning. Yes, I've also done a whole series of videos, actually a couple of videos on personality disorders. Uh, the definition of what one is, including borderline, antisocial, and also whether it's fair to label people with personality disorders, because I learned the hard way that it can piss people off. And I think there's some legitimate arguments to why it's not helpful to label some people in some circumstances. Go chiggity, 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 check out those videos. Always be plugging. Okay, here's an interesting point. Could pathological lying be used as a psychiatric defense in a criminal trial? So for example, if somebody had set up some fraud and they had told the victim lots and lots of lies and the perpetrator got a diagnosis of pathological lying, could that be a psychiatric defense? Could they get leniency or even something like a not guilty by reason of insanity plea? The simple answer is that it, the diagnosis doesn't actually really matter. That's uh, whether they've got the threshold for the diagnosis is not really that relevant. What is relevant is the legal factors of not guilty by reason of insanity. I've talked about them in other videos, as well as having a mental disorder. You also, the perpetrator either has to not know what they were doing was wrong or not know the nature of what they were doing. So if it was intentional fraud where they set up fake bank accounts or tried to hide information, then almost certainly they did know what they were doing was wrong because otherwise they wouldn't have tried to hide it. So in almost all those cases, I'd be very surprised if anybody got an insanity plea. I'm saying very surprised because the uh, their defense will still, still potentially could put it forward as a plea to psychiatrists battle it out, the judge makes the decision, but uh, I can't really see any scenario where that would work. However, if somebody had some sort of uh, disorder that caused them to lie, like Korsakoff's compulsive lying, and they didn't know what they were doing was wrong, so they didn't intentionally try and make money out of it, or they didn't intentionally try and mislead somebody, but they still did, and that person lost money, I suppose technically it wouldn't be a fraud case, but you could still try and sue for damages, then yes, in that situation, potentially you could have an insanity plea, potentially you could have a psychiatric defense, if, it's proven that that person didn't know what they were doing was wrong. 
And if that sounds complicated, it, it's because it is. When I have cases and I have to give evidence, I spend hours writing up reports and hours giving evidence. Uh, it's not simple. Okay, let's keep it moving. I ain't got no time for shucking and jiving. In conclusion, let's look at the areas of pathological lying that we covered. We learned about the psychological processes behind Pseudologica Fantastica, a aka compulsive liars. We covered some well-known cases of compulsive liars. We noted that your uncle is an alcoholic. We explored some psychiatric disorders that are associated with lies that are different from Pseudologica Fantastica. And that's basically what we've been talking about today. So before we finish, dear viewers, I'd be very interested to know if you have any examples of pathological liars who you might know, perhaps a boss or a family member. What was their motivation, do you think? Do you think they had one or do you think they even knew what they were doing? And how did it feel for you to be the target of their lies and their fabrications? I'd love to hear your stories. Please let me know in the schmoment schmetschmensch below. It generates discussion, which I love having with you beautiful, beautiful people. Okay, is there anything else? There's no need for that, it's very rude. Oh yeah, um, I am about to release a book called Into Minds by Sphere Publishing in March 2022. I've also recently recorded the audio version, version, audio book version, so you can listen to it if, you're, if you can't read. Uh, and that'll also be out in March, so go cop it. It's a bit like my videos, but a bit more formal, a bit more of a deep dive, and more about my personal cases rather than high profile cases. You should definitely go check it out. Please subscribe, please share this channel with other people. I need more subscribers because I am a very shallow person and I need love. Until next time, stay euthymic and do not forget, I love you. <laughs>